After the gnarliest winter in a hundred years, our worst fears are coming to life. We're doing some flood assessment right now. The snow is melting, but it's causing problems. We are officially in a state of emergency for Utah. We're taking a big step in construction. Walter White in the flesh. Oh yeah. And an even bigger step off the cliff in our driveway. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get in and out of our driveway now. Subscribe and come along today. Ah! As we roll with the punches, I messed up. And make the most of a slushy situation. You can make snow cones. It's got a little two stroke in it. But it won't <laughs> hurt you. All right, the time has come. We've had the umpteenth comment about our Christmas wreaths. And so they're coming down. Everyone says, these are Christmas wreaths. You can't have Christmas wreaths. It's like, there's no Santa Claus on there. There's no wrapping paper. It's just like a, it's just festive. a pine tree wreath. But anyways, we took them down. Now our house looks plain Jane and that's just how it's gonna be. Uh, we just had to wait until Easter to take these down basically, <laughs> so. Now the wreaths are both down. Uh, we just got back yesterday from Moab. If you guys caught our last video, we took a little vacation to go down and get into some sun. Today, we're back here, we're working. Brandon is almost here and we're gonna start insulating the ceiling of the garage or the floor of the casita, however you wanna look at it. When we got back from Moab, we knew that the temperatures had been a little bit warmer around our property and on our mountain. And so it was a little bit late last night when we got home. We're doing some flood assessment right now. I don't know if you guys remember, but that is flat in real life. But in snow life, there's 12 feet of snow on it. The problem is it's starting to melt into this zone. So at the end of the day, after it's been warm all day, last night, that was basically a whole pool of water and then it freezes at night when it gets cold again. Just kind of like a vicious cycle of water damage. <laughs> so eventually we're gonna have to figure out what to do here. It's not flooding into the house yet, so it's not an emergency yet. I don't know what happened, but yesterday the water was up to the door right here. Really? <laughs> now there's no water, so maybe the water percolated through the soil. You can see the water line, look on the cement behind, and to your left. Yeah. Look at how high that is, yeah, it's above the door jam. Yeah, that's where the concrete was wet. And uh, yesterday this whole section was wet and it had a trail of water that trickled all the way back into our drain in the back of the garage. Wow. Which is actually good because if water's gonna leak into here, I'm glad that we do have proper slope that it all drains all the way down into the drain and then just goes down into the gravel below the garage. We're gonna have to do something. But like I said, it's not yet an emergency. So it's okay so far. <laughs> Take that jacket off. Getting warm out here. It's 50 degrees, can you believe that? I'm like excited, but also a little nervous. <laughs> We're, uh, all the snow that's running off of the deck is coming down right here. That's not the deck. <laughs> Feels like the deck. <laughs> all the snow that's coming off this roof right here is basically running down and just dripping, and it's going back into the TRX garage. So we need to prevent that at all costs. So we're gonna dig a little trench, a little trough out to this side of the driveway. And then hopefully as this stuff starts to like melt and drain, it'll go out to the driveway and go down and make a big muddy mess down there instead of in here. Trent the Trencher. Trent the Trencher is back in business, baby. <laughs> It's already working. It's flowing. She's a flowing. We don't need no stinking French drain. <sighs> we got a snow trench. It's really funny, like what happens when things start melting on our property. I don't know about anybody else, but um, there's just like random axles, pallets. It's like a treasure hunt everywhere. There's just like things appearing as the snow melts that you're like, oh, I forgot that was there. Oh, I forgot that we had that. It's really fun actually. Now that we can actually stop a lot of the water runoff from going into the garage, we've got it going down the driveway over here. We've got to do something that is not on our minds right now, which is insulation because that's the next step of the process. And uh, it's not going to be fun, but hopefully in the end, it'll be worth it. 
help what you feel. Can't help what you feel. Oh, no. Ice friction in there. What are we going to do? We need a sump pump. Get a shot back. All right, we're just having a pumpkin chocolate chip cookie, which is my favorite type of cookie. <laughs> having a nice little snack before we get started here. I bought some new respirators. Cool. So we're gonna throw on our respirators, some gloves. We're just gonna start insulating. I was born in the dark. <laughs> I knew it. Stand by fear here. <laughs> Neither of you can get it. This does not look right. Oh yeah. How's it feel? Not good. <laughs> All right, let's get this friggin' over with. <laughs> it's alive! Ew. These are wrong. What? These are wrong. What? These are 16 inch bats. What do we need? We need 24. What? All of them are 16. No. 16 in the center. No. How do we just realize this? Was it a Lowe's issue or what happened here? No. <clears throat> it was my fault. <laughs> uh, they have like obviously bats in different like thicknesses, like different uh, stud depths of insulation. So like a two by six wall is R23, a two by eight wall is R30, and uh, I messed up. I got the R30, which is what we need, but we need it in 24 inches wide, and all of these bats are 16 inches wide. To your credit, we have been using other bats that are 16 inches on center, right, for these walls? Well, no, it's, I mean, it's the problem that like buying these, I might've just bought the wrong stuff again, I'd, hold on. <laughs> I eventually found the R30 and I was like, oh, R30, can I get 24 bats? And I think I just purchased it without double checking. Oh, wait, are we sure it's the 24 inches wide? And it wasn't. And then when we went to pick it up, it was just such a stressful, hectic mess <laughs> that instead of like seeing if it was 16 inches wide, I was worried about getting them strapped down to the truck and being able to get them all up to our house in that massive snowstorm. You don't have and to justify it at all to me. I make mistakes all day, every day. Yeah, well, now we brought 24 bales of 16-inch <laughs> wide insulation up here. The, uh, the caveat to this is that we can insulate the ceiling in there, and we don't have to spray foam the underside of the roof. Okay. In there, we have to spray foam it, the inside, mm, okay. like an inch, because right. it's going to be conditioned. Yeah. And then we can use this bat to do the rest of our insulation in that side of the garage. So basically I messed up. And now we're gonna back the TRX out, get the snowmobile out of there. And we're gonna insulate the ceiling in there and see what happens. All right, making the most of it. Oh my. Did that flash you? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I was in the danger zone. That hole right there? Yeah, it's my ice fishing hole. It got me real good. <laughs> oh, splashed you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. We can make snow cones. I don't want to eat that. Start selling them to the neighbors. <laughs> it's got a little two-stroke in it, but it won't hurt you. <laughs> That's not going to stay. Doesn't have to be there for long. First row done. 
<sighs> My nose hurts. Really? Yeah. But at least you're not breathing it in. Oh. That's right, at least I'm not breathing it in. This mask just like presses on your nose so hard. You have a little nose too. Thank you. Imagine what my nose would feel like in there. I know. <laughs> it's, best you, it's best you stay away from masks like this. They're down there singing and dancing and having a grand old time while they continue to insulate. I'm gonna chip away a little bit more at the iceberg on our deck. It's so close to melting. I'm just gonna like give it a little bit of help, see if we can have our full deck back by the end of today. boys are flying today. The insulation is going up super fast. We've got the music playing. It's a warm, sunny summer day. It feels amazing out here. I'm actually vacuuming up the water that we are starting to see pooling here in the garage, um, which I'm slowly realizing is about to be a, a never ending chore because there's a lot of ice in here. We knew that this was going to happen when the snow started to melt, um, but it was Better than leaving no roof on this garage and having there be 10 feet of snow in here instead of like two feet of snow in here. It's going pretty fast. We're making a lot of progress, so I'm happy about that. Um, we'll be done with the ceiling here in like 10 minutes and then uh, might have to go to Home Depot and get one of those spray foam insulation kits so that I can do the ceiling and the other one. Then we could insulate the ceiling of the other addition tomorrow. Might have to go get nice coffee. Yeah. <laughs> red oh i'm sure mine is too oh that looks cool yeah it looks great the trench is working out great yeah this is a legit river now our moat way to go oh yeah she's flowing that's good i mean the gravel's right there so it's maybe just like a half a foot it's not as much as i thought before and it is percolating into the gravel and like going through the ground. It's just, it's melting a bit faster than it can percolate into the ground. And that's why it keeps pooling up. Mm -hmm. But that's just, you know, that's a problem we're gonna have to, gonna have to live with. This is what we're gonna do with the rest of our day, <laughs> right here. We got the ceiling of that garage insulated. I don't really know what else we can do. We were supposed to insulate up here. Mm -hmm. I guess we could go buy two by six insulation for the walls and insulate the walls in there and in there. Okay. That's probably what we're gonna do tomorrow, but today, a little bit of a lazy day, and I think we're gonna call it a day. That's wild. All right, well, we are uh, just getting ready for the day, and we had a guy come out and actually scrape down our road so that he could get as close to the dirt as possible so that as the snow starts to melt, it doesn't make like ruts, which makes it really hard to pass on the road. So they came and scraped down our road, and now our driveway is like to the middle of my thigh. Like, that's how tall our driveway is, and I don't know if we're going to be able to get in and out of our driveway now. It's super gnarly. Yeah. This goes to show that like, you think those snow banks are big, mm -hmm. but you don't realize there's like also an extra two, two and a half feet on top of the road. And then the snow banks are that big. It's just amazing. That's crazy. Turn is pinned up against 
the snowbank behind the car. He's pinned up in the cliff in front of the car. No idea how he's gonna be able to turn this Jeep around. Our community is unbelievable. We have to be pretty self-sufficient because of where we live and the community totally rallies together. They've been plowing and scraping and blading down the roads nonstop ever since there have been some warmer temperatures. Things are melting quickly and we have enormous snowbanks all over the mountain. Yesterday, one of the guys came through and tried to scrape down our road and it's causing a little bit of height variation between the driveways and the road itself. Sydney said the rest of the roads in the neighborhood are awesome. She made it up here no problem. It's just getting into our driveway. That's proving to be a little complicated. I mean, the problem is now she's stuck. So <laughs> I was literally just trying to turn it around so that I could come at like an angle and see if I could get up in the very end of the driveway. Now you can really see how deep this cliff <clears throat> is, this little sheer drop off. That's the shortest part. Over here, it's like another foot deep. Wow. Another foot higher. The problem is like she couldn't even leave. She would have to back down the driveway the way she was. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to like turn her around and that wasn't happening either. <laughs> so it's nice that the guy came and cut down the, the road so that he could get it you know, down so we don't end up with really deep ruts that could leave people stranded and stuck. But now we're like stranded and stuck from being able to get in and out of our driveway. Yeah. And like our tractor just has a blower. We don't have like a blade. I don't have another piece of machinery where I could actually like grade this down so that it has a slope mm -hmm. up into the driveway. It's like impossible for us and the neighbor. The neighbor <laughs> drives a Subaru and he's got like a 18 inch cliff in the front of his driveway too. So <laughs> joys of living in the mountains. I set out on a road that I built with my own two hands. I'm the friends on the right. way people chose to yeah. make a stand. What's wild is we've never had to deal with anything like this before. After three winters of living up here, we've had to deal with snow melt, flood mitigation, water runoff, some erosion, uh, snow removal, but we've never had to deal with like this much snow. This is crazy. It's a one lane road right now because of how deep the snow is and everybody is stuck in their driveways at this point. Like, look at this. That's like two and a half to three feet. If you wanted to come into this driveway, you couldn't. got back from some wheeling in the desert so this is all fresh. Actually Trent's uh, wheeling and winching skills are always pretty fresh because whether we're in the desert or on the mountain there seems to be recoveries happening all the time. All right now that I've got the winch hooked up I can provide some extra pull to get Sydney's Jeep up onto the ledge. I don't know if I'm actually going to take it all the way up. I guess I may as well so I can get it out of the way of the road and we can continue working for the day but I should be able to get it up now. thought Easter Jeep Safari was over. This is the Arctic Jeep Safari. That was a little bit tough. And uh, when we leave today, I'm gonna have to make sure we turn around the truck and back it off the cliff so that I'm aiming the right direction and I can get down the road. This is gnarly. Today I'm actually really excited because one, the sun has come out and it has started to melt tons and tons of snow. Things are really changing around here. In fact, today is the first day in quite a long time that I'm not putting my snow boots on. 
I'm just putting on my regular work boots because these are what I need to get through the rafters and spray in this spray foam. I know I've been talking for months about getting a spray foam truck up here so that we could spray foam the roof and all the places that need spray foam. But in reality, what I need is a thin layer of spray foam to seal everything along the roof. And then I can use bat insulation. And if I go that, that route, I can actually do it a lot sooner because all these canisters that you guys see right here are DIY spray foam kits. Now this is not the spray foam that's going to expand and be, you know, seven inches of amazing insulation. This is just going to do a nice one to two inch layer, a nice thin layer that's required by code. Then we'll be able to start doing bat insulation that Brandon and I will be able to bring up here. We don't have to wait for the roads to be in perfect shape to get a box truck up here and have a spray foam company. This is the shortcut to getting things done faster. And today we're gonna to be prepping for spray foam and hopefully we'll be able to get a bunch of this done. Yeah, good girl. What are you doing? Yeah, well, you know, we're tinkering out here. We've got some issues. What? Closes nicely now. Something happened where all this snow and ice that's been packing up on the roofs up here has kind of like either torn or put small holes in some of the tape. Mm. So like we taped everything as good as we could. What you really need to do is put ice and water shield down and then get your like actual metal roof up there so that no water and snow makes it through. Yeah. But we've got some spots up there that when the sun starts to hit the snow and it starts to melt, it starts to leak and drip. We had water trickling down these like king studs and down different places here that was causing a lot of this wood to get wet. And when wood gets wet, it swells. That swelling can be significant enough that it can cause the door to not want to open or close. So pretty much I wasn't even able to open this door without like battering ramming it open. It was like so squished in there. So I ran the sawzall blade through there, provided about a 16th of an inch of clearance with the sawzall blade. But now the door opens and closes kind of a little more seamlessly. It's better to be too tight than too loose. Well, no, oh. it's not, <laughs> but. It's a great theory. <laughs> We're gonna tinker with this a little bit more, see if we can get it primo, and then uh, hopefully I still have some spray foam somewhere. I can fill up these cracks. We'll be back in business. Professional technique right there. It's pretty close. Looks a lot better. Yeah. It's not touching. Do you remember the shake weight? This is it. That's it. <laughs> First unexpected project of the day with the door done. Moving on to unexpected project of the day number two. Heating things up so that we can spray foam. Okay, so this is really exciting because like Trent was saying earlier, we were gonna have to wait for a spray foam truck to come all the way up to our house to spray foam the ceiling and they come in a huge box truck that would never make it on our roads until the roads were dry and compacted. It was like full summer basically. And at the right things are going, obviously full summer is a ways away. So we are able to do our own spray foam for a small thin layer and then put Rockwell insulation against the spray foam. And we don't have to wait for a box truck. We can do it ourselves, which honestly, we always prefer to do anyway. The issue is you can't wait longer than 30 seconds without spraying it out or else you gotta clean out, you gotta change the tip. Wow. So basically like once you start, you just gotta like Once you pop, crazy. you just can't stop. Once you pop, you just cannot stop. Do you know that brand? Pringles, come on, it's Pringles. Uh, I should have known. <laughs> I hate Pringles. Oh really? Yeah, they're gross. <laughs> oh man. You also like the chocolate orange sticks though, so I don't know about your taste. My taste buds might be <laughs> skewed. My <laughs> taste buds are a little funky. The <laughs> um, thing I'm concerned the most about is like our insulation ducts, these flexible ducts that are here. I need to like spray and then like pull it to the side and like spray behind it so that I can actually get a layer of spray foam between those ducts mm -hmm. and the like sheathing. And that's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be duckiful. It's gonna be duckiful. <laughs> I 
How's the store working? It's working really well. Now it closes perfectly. We are officially in a state of emergency for Utah with the flooding that is expected at least over the next 30 days. It's a little scary because there's been some massive flooding already and out of the 30 inches of snowpack that we have, it's only been about 2.9 inches so far. So we have a ton more of snow melt to go um, and hopefully it goes nice and slow and smooth, but I guess we'll just have to see. only complaint for the day is that it is warm up here. It's a great, it's a great problem to have, don't get me wrong. Um, but the heat is on downstairs, which makes it even warmer up here. We're gonna put these suits on to protect us and the masks just make everything very muffled and kind of stifling and hot. We need that heat in order for the spray foam to set up and dry correctly. Uh, but we can't open a window or like get any fresh air and it's already like, we haven't even started and it's already toasty in here. I get hot, I can just stand outside for a second. <laughs> it's a balmy 23 degrees outside. <laughs> yeah. You know, they basically make this stuff almost dummy proof, but if there's a dummy that can mess it up, it's gonna be me. <laughs> Big blob of marshmallow goo. Walter White in the flesh. Oh yeah. Please let this work. Put your hair in a ponytail, Trent. Almost. Am I gonna get to a ponytail first or am I gonna cut it? <laughs> yeah. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> the good thing is this is going pretty quickly and it's annoying, but uh, easy, relatively speaking. It's messy, that's like the biggest issue. Yeah. It's messy, it's hot, it's sweaty. It's like, you have to wear a respirator, so that's not fun because you know, there's like chemicals in there that you don't wanna be dealing with, but. I'd say I probably got at least a third, if not more, of the upper roof in there done. Mm -hmm. So like another another set of bottles will do the other, like two thirds, one more set of bottles will finish it off, and then we'll be done up there. We can call for the inspector to come up and make sure that we have enough spray foam. We can start putting our bats up there. Cool. It's exciting. I think uh, probably the next the next few days are going to be spent traveling insulation up here, <laughs> installing insulation, and spray foaming.
round three. Got to do the stable end and then start working my way this direction. Okay. Get all the way up to the peak on this side. My prediction is I'll get about 80% of what's left uh -huh. done with these canisters and then we'll have to go get the last can set of canisters to do like the final little bit. <laughs> I don't weird. want that to be the case, but I think that's gonna be the case. Yeah. windows and get out of here. Ugh. Imagine doing that for a living? No, you could not pay me enough. You're steaming. Oh my yeah. gosh, do you oh see the gosh. do you see the steam coming off of them? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I'm hot baby. Yeah you are. How much spray foam do I have on my face? Uh I would say a significant amount. Dang it. <laughs> That was fun. It's just crazy. Like even with a respirator, I was like starting to feel like I couldn't breathe. Really? Just like I was starting to feel like I wasn't getting enough oxygen. Yeah. It's like we're already at elevation and then you mix in a bunch of like stuff that replaces the oxygen. <laughs> Very tough job these guys have doing the spray foam. Yeah, much respect. But good news, still have about half of one of those sets of canisters left so we can do some touch up if we need to. Cool. And we got the entire envelope of the casita completely spray foamed. Yeah, baby. Which means we're ready for some more mineral wool. We got to get the inspection, but we're ready for mineral wool up there. I got to get another thing of spray foam and do exactly what we did today in the man cave ceiling. Then we can mineral wool in there. And then? And then we'll be ready for drywall. Drywall means fixtures and cabinets and paint colors and furniture. Drywall means Yay! scraping and mudding for a month. <laughs> we're just going to tongue and groove, forget it. <laughs> I have to drywall the garage. Yeah, but that doesn't have to be pretty. No. That but can it be. It has to be taped and mudded yeah. still. Just just taping and mudding isn't fun, but it's true. trying to make it look pretty is it's, the hard part. It's really the sanding that sucks. No, it's sanding and then realizing you have to mud again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you do that about 27 times <laughs> yeah. in a row. Yeah. And then on the 27th time, you're like, I should do it again, but I'm not good. Yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl, Where's Frank? Come on, Frank, inside. There oh, he boy. is, Frank boy. <sighs> it has been a long day. It has been a gnarly day. We came in here, we got showered, we hung out, made some food, and now we're getting ready to go to bed. We got so much done today, but this should serve as your reminder to take a break. You deserve it. Rest is good for you. It's important to uh, do something for you. Not always be super productive, but like just take some time, take a deep breath. It's okay. Yeah, and even though we just took a trip to Moab, I feel like I could take another trip because <laughs> trips are great and uh, breaks yeah. are awesome, but yeah. we're back to work now. So we got our spray foam done. And in the next episode, we're gonna be doing more insulation. So make sure you guys stay tuned. If you guys enjoyed this adventure, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. We were young and we were free and running. Never bothered about what could be coming. Every day we danced and life was smiling. We were young and drunk in love.